You're watching SWAC football on ESPN, presented by USA. College football in the month of March. Why didn't we think of this sooner? The Jaguars of Southern open up their home slate. UAPB with their season opener as the Golden Lions and the Jaguars collide here at Mumford Stadium in Baton Rouge. Great to have you with us, everyone. Lincoln Rose, along with former Princeton running back Steve Foster. And Steve, I mentioned it, spring football, I like it. Yes, and it counts. So you have two teams ready to go from the FCS level of play, and they're ready here on March 6th. Well, we've got some of the finest in the SWAT colliding here today, including on the defensive side for UAPB. They can pack a punch including the man who anchors that defensive line, Xavier Mitchell. He's a great one. The redshirt junior from New Orleans will be wreaking havoc as he's earned preseason honors for his Golden Lions. He will try to keep Ladarius Skelton from settling in here in his own backyard. Another preseason all-conference selection. Skelton guided the Jaguars to the victory against Alabama State last weekend. This is a young man who has seven touchdowns these last two years against these Golden Lions. Well, he's a redshirt senior, and he's from the backyard of UAPD from Pine Bluff. He's a winner. He's already had double-digit wins throughout his career, and he's looking to get another one today. It'll be the only home game on the schedule in Baton Rouge for the Jaguars, and of course, finally, the season getting underway for the Golden Lions. Opening kick when you rejoin us. Black football on ESPN is presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket Wireless, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official football sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Great to be back at Mumford Stadium in Baton Rouge. As the Jaguars, again, the nuance of the schedule this year, this will be the only true home game in Baton Rouge. Steve Foster, as we take a look at what it'll take for the Golden Lions of UP, UAPB to prevail today, what stands out to you? Well, you got to get a good start, Lincoln, and winning the first quarter, uh, you know, is going to make that happen because it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but start is a great thing to do as well, especially when you haven't played a game and then ground and pound. You want to take the clock away from a great offense of the Southern Jaguars and have ball control. And as for Southern, how do they improve to a 2-0 start? Well, they're going to have to win on third down. You know, I think at home that helps them, and they certainly have a quarterback that can get them to move the sticks throughout this ball game. But also, they're going to have to minimize their penalties. And penalties can really take away and negate good plays right here, minimizing those types of penalties, especially on defense, too, where they can have UAPB continue a drive is going to be key as well. Today's keys to the game presented by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. So the Jaguars able to survive their opening test last weekend in Montgomery, Alabama. Came down to a missed field goal that would have otherwise sent them into overtime. Defense of Southern, really a bright spot in that. We'll get to see that defense out first. As Southern did win the toss. They elected to defer to the second half. So that means UAPB under first-year head coach Doc Gamble will bring out their offense to get this game started. Of course, they promoted Doc in the offseason. Uh, but great to have a guy who knows the personnel but brings a new mindset to Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Absolutely, and to reiterate, assistant head coach for two seasons, now the head coach, and he does recognize what this team has and what it needs to win. And as we had an opportunity to speak with him earlier in the week, delegation, and then attention to detail. You're looking at your SWAC Special Teams Player of the Week in Cesar Barajas. Made all of his extra points. The only field goal he was called upon from 41 yards out against Alabama State last week. That proved to be the game-winning field goal and a three-point win. Also will wear the boot as the starting punter for Southern this season. So Southern already victorious last week. They are your favorites to win the West in the SWAC. As we are underway in Baton Rouge. As Tyron Ralph 
preseason all-conference as a special teams returner, and you're seeing why Barajas will finally slow him down at about the 45. But UAPB is going to set up just short of midfield for their opening drive of spring 2021. Well, no disappointment for a preseason return specialist right there. And UAPB gets great starting field position as the kickoff are doing. It's, to me, an art more than it is a science. And the ball looks like it's placed at the 45-yard line. And again, starting field position makes a huge difference when it comes to percentages of getting points on the board. Well, we mentioned, of course, Southern's quarterback, Ladarius Skelton, is from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, so it's only fair that UAPB has a quarterback from the greater New Orleans area, and Skylar Perry, who will line up out of the shotgun here. And they will keep it on the ground early. This is Matthias Clark. It's a first down carry, and he's not ready to give up. Look at that surge at the end. As Matthias Clark, the freshman out of Illinois, unleashes with his first collegiate carry. I think that goes to ground and pound without a doubt and a quick pace for UAPB. He runs behind two first-team preseason all-conference linemen on the left side in Smith and Evans. They'll toss it out to the right and not much to be gained by your preseason all-conference wide receiver and Harry Ballard the third, the senior out of St. Louis. Well, good defense by Southern as they come up and stop that little quick slip screen on the edge. And that's probably a one yard to no gain on a quick offensive set. Skyler Perry split snaps last year against Southern with quarterback Shannon Patrick. But we expect him to bear the entire load here today. And that will bring the average yards per carry back down to earth for Matthias Clark. I'll tell you right here, Lincoln, looks like there's a lot of opportunity possibly to the outside on the right, but a quick pursuing inside out Southern defense holds that to about a two yard gain. So third and long facing Skylar Perry in this offense for the Golden Lions. Looking for their second straight winning season. Perry, a nice confident throw, a first down catch, and it's into the red zone for UAPB as he dials up Ralph. Yes, and a good attention to detail on the end of the route to go down and get the ball, help your quarterback out, and as you mentioned, knocking on the door of the red zone at the 20. So far, they've kept Jordan Lewis at bay, the standout defensive end for Southern. A little bit of pressure there. You knew Skyler Perry realized he had to get rid of it quickly. I talked about Jordan Lewis, man who went off for four sacks, five tackles for loss in that win against Alabama State, including that forced fumble on the opening drive. And there you see some of the information on Skyler Perry, who out of New Orleans, went to Edna Carr High School. And the second running back you'll see a lot of is Omar Allen. And they did not have to spend much of the recruiting budget tracking down Omar. He is from Pine Bluff out of Watson Omar Chapel High. Last year just had one run against Southern, but it was a touchdown run. Third snap in the red zone for UAPB. Perry has time. Back corner. Cannot make the catch. A nice coverage from Jacoby Jones, the rover for Southern back there in the secondary, denying Josh Wilkes the six points. Yes, pretty good coverage in the secondary, and that ball was thrown to the deep left part of the end zone. It doesn't give your receiver a lot of room to adjust if you had to come back because staying in bounds in that corner is pretty important. UAPB will go for the points. Here's Zach Pivniska. They're confident with him within 43, 44 yards, and that one will sneak inside and through. So UAPB gets their first drive under their belt in 2021, and it leads to points. Golden Lions strike first in Baton Rouge. Jaguars will have a chance to answer when you rejoin us. Modest return from the kick 
as the Jaguars will set up inside their 30, trailing by three. Lincoln Rose, Steve Foster, great to have you with us for some college football here in the spring. And Steve, it'll be Ladarius Skelton, second team preseason all SWAT quarterback. We mentioned the fifth year senior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, squaring off against his hometown team, a, a foe that he has fared quite well against the past couple of years. Each of the last two years, he's amassed over 500 yards in the two ball games. Yes, and something that's also key is about seven touchdowns worth of points as well. Little flea flicker. Skelton able to corral it, fires it downfield, and he has Brandon Hinton. They had sucked in the Golden Lions defense. And Skelton finds the junior from Mobile, Alabama. Good pass and recovery because that ball was flipped back on the flea flicker and a great recovery by Skelton and to find his man downfield. Hinton was his favorite target last weekend for five catches. This time they do keep it on the ground. Ball comes out, but you would presume after Devin Ben was already down. The senior tailback last week, 16 carries, 40 yards, just two and a half per carry. And we do, at the moment, have an indication a flag is down. We'll get things sorted out in just a moment. Again, it looked like Ben was already down by contact, but we'll sort out the flag. And I tell you, you've got to protect the ball all the way to the ground. It's hard to see uh, from the back. Uh, the ball could have been sliding out, and if it is the case, UAPB could have its first turnover recovery. A lot to sort out, especially with the hanky on the, uh, on the field, the flag coming out after the ball was recovered. Well, while we look at officials, wanna, well, let's take a listen as they appear to have reached a conclusion. A little premature applause. Those two will cancel each other out. So they do rule this a fumble. That is the right call. But they also say Southern got the football back. And now they will review it. Now, frankly, I don't think they'll see any video that conclusively proves otherwise. So again, right now it is set to be a first down for Southern with their recovery of the fumble. And because it was ruled a Southern recovery, the burden will be to overturn that call with any angle we have. It was a great opportunity for the Golden Lions to jump on that football and they signal they have the ball. Then it could have been after the fact, but again, that's why we have the officiating crew to figure that out. And Lincoln. You can only get two opportunities to have on a sportsman like in college football before you are excused. And so it's one for the defensive team and one for the offensive. I think it's going to be a bigger loss if an offensive lineman is coming out again. Starting offensive lineman to me is worth more than, I'm sorry, somebody in the second or third level of the defense. But you don't want any of them out of the ball game. So here's what common sense tells us. There were four Golden Lions defenders on top of that football, but we never actually conclusively saw any of them holding the ball. Right. You would think with those four, one of them would have had it instead of Devin Ben, but that's simply not the way the letter of the law reads. Well, I gotta give credit to Devin Ben. He fumbled it and he is, his job as an offensive uh, player who totes the rock to get back on that fumble and a great second or maybe third effort to retain the ball. We never saw conclusively that anybody for the Gold Lions actually did possess it, even though, again, law of averages, common sense suggests they would have. There you see Dawson Odom still in his first decade at the helm of Southern, and at the moment he's anticipating his offense will stay out there on the field. 
So again, while we're talking about officials, want to remind you that the NBA All-Star game, for the first time, all three of their game day officials will be from HBCUs, and that includes Courtney Kirkland from Southern. Well, that's a great honor. And uh, my dad being a Morgan State Bear, he an HBCU. Let's see if this angle shows us conclusively a golden line holding that football. <sighs> Looks like Ben takes it away. Right? Oh, that's tough. Let's see. Here is your definitive answer. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. Wow. There was a clear recovery on the defense. It'll be time for the ball, first and 10 at the 19 yard line. So again, the unsportsmanlike calls offset in terms of any way that would have influenced things, but they do say Golden Lions recover. In reality, you would suspect that they did. But the burden was to see video to prove otherwise, and I have to imagine that last angle, they thought they saw just enough possession from UAPB before Devin Ben came in and stripped it away. Looked like maybe Isaac Peppers was the one who truly possessed the ball as they went to the replay. And now it's first and 10 for the Golden Lions. See if they mark the ball appropriately. Again, Southern was set to take their next snap in the red zone, currently trailing by a field goal. But here's Skylar Perry in this offense back out. Now Doc Gamble, his head coach, is just asking that Perry not press, not force himself to do anything outside of his comfort zone. Good composure. Doesn't see any other options. Calls his own number. And that's going to be a first down run from your quarterback, Skylar Perry. I think that's a great decision. Once you roll out and you can't find anybody, tuck it and run, throw it away, but don't have minus yardage creep up into a play. UAPB. Already up a field goal, now with their second possession. He'll hand off to Clark. And Clark upended by Glenn Brown. Good defensive play by Glenn Brown coming in and the play again looks like it has promise. There's a running lane, inside handoff. But the shake and bake doesn't work for the offense on that one, and uh, the defender going right for the legs as he should. Yeah, pardon me, that was the free safety, Chase Foster, who last week had the pick six against Alabama State. Here's second and eight. A designed run for Perry. Let it be known, I can never be unhappy with somebody with the last name Foster making a good play. So another third down conversion opportunity here for UAPB. Trying to make the most of a turnover from Southern a moment ago. Perry has time, has the arm, and has his man. Josh Wilkes will extend his drive into Jaguars territory. That's a great pass, Lincoln. That is a throw that not only has to rely on timing, but it also has to rely on throwing the ball over a defender and in front of another defender and a great route and a great timing play for a team who's playing its first game here in the spring. Oh, and a well-timed hit coming in on the coverage by the all-conference cornerback, Morris Smith. If he's there a split second sooner, that's pass interference, but instead, Able to get there right when the football does. Red shirt sophomore definitely puts a big hit on the receiver to dislodge the ball. That wasn't going to go for a lot anyway. And in southern territory, Perry. Perry buys himself time, avoids a loss of yardage, and picks up maybe three. It's going to be third and long, but it's going to be manageable third down. Nobody really open in the secondary, and a good decision not to force the ball. A little spin and protect, and a good play by the quarterback not to have that ball come out, because one has already been put on the turf and turned over. 
Well, they converted a third down and eight a moment ago. They faced third and eight again here from the 42-yard line. Perry out to the flat. We'll need a lot of yardage after that catch, and it's simply not going to happen as Jacoby Papillon, the senior from Lake Charles, comes up with the stop, and it'll be decision time for the Golden Lions. I tell you, a good tackle and a lot of strength shown by the senior safety. And it looks like UAPB hopes to pin Southern back as they will bring out their punting unit. And the difference here on this drive, Lincoln, is that the starting position was their own 19 as opposed to 45, and so no real opportunity for points. Oh, Sanchez trying to kick this one short of the end zone. Golden Lions don't get too greedy. Inside the two-yard line is where Southern will get this ball back. So no points after the turnover from the Jaguars, but they are pinned deep when they start their second drive of the day. It's a field goal, your difference so far. Golden Lions scoring on their opening drive, but punting away a moment ago. But boy, was it a great punt from Josh Sanchez downed by his special teams teammates back on the Southern two-yard line. I kind of like going with some type of pressure, some type of blitz when you have a team pinned inside that five, especially the two. But again, as you mentioned, a skilled quarterback in the Darius Skelton. They'll keep it on the ground, trying to get some breathing room, and nice job spinning forward for additional yardage. And that'll get the quarterback, Skelton, out to the 10-yard line for this next snap, facing about a second and three. And they'll go right back as Marcus Askew will come up for the stop. Askew is getting the start today in place of Paul Reeves for UAPB. Reeves was the one player when you talk about non-pandemic related health these days, unavailable today, they hope to get him back soon. A talented nickelback for the Golden Lions, but Southern, two play calls, and all of a sudden have themselves a first down and are out of their own end zone. A huge block, but not much is going to come from it. Well, slip screens are tough. You do have to get a block on the edge. And the tough thing about that is not only do you have to get that block, but you have to watch for that penalty because a lot of times receivers will get the hanky for holding or grabbing or something like that. Right here, it's just good defense. Yeah, that's Travis Tucker who came in, the big tight end for the block. Second and 10, kept by Skelton. Still on his feet, and it's a first down, a 12-yard gain from Skelton. Last week, 72 yards on the ground for the quarterback for Southern, including one of his two touchdowns. A really good decision by the quarterback, Skelton, and just kind of scoots along, cuts back inside, and gets the first down. Running the wrong way, now heading up the field. As that's Marquise McLean, the fifth year senior out of Crestview, Florida, former Auburn Tiger. Had one carry for five yards last week. Good pursuit by both of these defenses early. And Lincoln, not much. I think maybe one yard credited on that play. Yeah, it'll be second and nine here. Good protection. We'll finally dump it down to his running back, Sims. And after a couple of carries for Sims today, has his first catch. Skelton did all he could to buy just enough time to get a check down to a running back. And we certainly appreciate those and uh, a good run after the catch to get the ball up for another first down at about the 38-yard line. A little over five minutes still to go in this opening quarter. More success 
As they go right back to Sims on the ground. Good run coming near side. Sims with two opportunities. One for a first down and a second for almost another first down to gain an eight. Whole playbook is available to you right here, isn't it? Absolutely. See if they look for the home run or just pick up the first down. On the ground. Patient running. That patience pays off. Another first down. Southern's had multiple options out of that backfield. His most recent carry is from Craig Nelson, a redshirt junior out of Miami. I tell you, I love the off-tackle play because you get some of those offensive linemen or tight end coming around, and if you can just be a little patient, you can find an alley to run, and that's between kind of that tackle and tight end position with a kickout block. And able to blow up the play is Jalen Thigpen. It's almost like Thigpen knew exactly what that was. You know, you get that sometimes in practice when you run a play more than once and you just want to look at the, the scheme, the blocking, and you're actually trying to teach the offense what's going on right there. <laughs> the defense knew exactly what was going on. You saw Skelton was pulling that ball back. He's fortunate his hands were strong enough to hang on to that football. So second and 12. Underneath into traffic. But prevailing with the catch is Dorian Valiant. A nice six foot two target. That was just zipped in the nick of time because it looked like Thigpen may have had an opportunity to either tip this ball or make an interception. But a good gain for Southern. So third and five from the Golden Lions half of the field. And Skelton will welcome the contact. It's a heady play by the quarterback who saw the defense actually bailing out to go cover downfield. And he just followed in behind the vacating defenders. It looked like some of the linebackers wanted to take away the underneath zones. And he picks up the first down with his feet. So next snap takes place inside the 34-yard line. Best field position of the day for the Jaguars. Uh, I say that they technically had the ball in the red zone until fumbling it in their last drive. Nelson. Nelson has the angle and might have the first down. It'll be close to a 10-yard gain for Nelson. I think that's maybe 11 or 12 and a... Off tackle play to the left side, and again, the blocking on an off tackle play really good. It is marked, I think, a little generous, generous spot, but. It'll be about nine and a half on the spot, so second down. Line judge getting it correct. And there is the first down, and no fumble this time. Southern is into the red zone. Craig Nelson on the carry. Take a look at the Pepsi Zero Sugar Impact Players. Pepsi Zero Sugar, an official football sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And Skelton looking to lead the Jaguars on their first scoring drive. And minute 54 to go here in the opening quarter. We have our first timeout taken as the Jaguars want to make the most of this trip into the red zone. Only home game of the spring for Southern, looking to take their first lead in Baton Rouge. UAPB calling that last time out inside two minutes to go in this opening quarter. They hang on to a three-point lead, at least for the moment. Southern threatening their next snap will be inside the red zone. Jaguars with a turnover on their last drive, likely costing them points. They're going to come through with something to show for it here. Skelton eyes downfield, now under pressure, and Skelton's going to be dropped in the backfield by Askew. And again, Marcus Askew thrown into the starting lineup in the absence of Paul Reeves today and making the most of his opportunities as the freshman. The freshman pretty quick as he runs down the red shirt 
senior, his fifth year and first year. Well, we redshirt, I guess, first and fifth, but still a great play from the secondary for UAPB. Loss of about four. And now outside the red zone. Wide open spaces and into the end zone. Gerard Sims, touchdown Southern. Steve Yu, as a former running back, taking the handoffs from uh, some guy named Jason Garrett, I know can appreciate the work of the offensive line there, opening up the spaces, bound a 23-yard touchdown run, and capped off by the extra point from Barajas. You gotta love when you can make an offensive play a foot race. And again, another inside handoff, good blocking up front, and the lane was wide, and the opportunity there and Sims scoots, as you mentioned, at the you look that 20 to 30 yards is, is the optimal just burst to go for a touchdown, and right there, untouched into the end zone. Sophomore gives Southern the lead. You've heard me mention a couple times it's their only home game. They will be the designated home team in that classic against Grambling, but of course that will be a neutral site. Their other home game was going to be against Alcorn State, but of course Alcorn State opted out of the spring season. Every team in the league will get credit for a win for that canceled matchup. But it also means Southern will have uh, only today to welcome their fans into Mumford. I still think if you asked the team in blue and yellow, they would certainly take one opportunity at home and to go on the road to get a season completed here in 2021. So Dawson Odom sees his Jaguars strike first. They had their early lead against Alabama State and hung on to that lead until they finally slipped behind briefly on the road last weekend. And Barajas would break a tie and have the game-winning field goal. His counterpart of Alabama State would be 0 for 2 on field goals. Arguably the difference in that game. It is called football. So on occasion, a foot makes all the difference. Got some friends uh, who play that other football who remind me. <laughs> Absolutely. And they will bring this down after the touchback. Again, for UAPB, a reminder, last week their game canceled, postponed more accurately because of some water issues still resulting from that freeze that came through Texas, Louisiana, and the entire region. In fact, the UAPB Golden Lions for a week there were the Little Rock Golden Lions because they were living out of a hotel off campus and just struggling to get any kind of practice in. But Doc Gamble says this last week felt like it was the fall. They got in six full days of practice. They were excited to finally get their schedule underway after more than 400 days without playing competitive football. The adversity hopefully helps the Golden Lions for this game and beyond during the spring 2021 season. And they're going to start off with a five-yard penalty, moving back the Golden Lions after the touchback a moment ago. Coach Gamble did remind us, of course, arguably starting in the spring, helped with his freshmen making the adjustment to new college terminology. That's probably different from what they used in high school. That pocket held up, but the coverage was even better for Southern. And we mentioned Chase Foster was fantastic last week against Alabama State, including his pick six. It was his touchdown that gave Southern their first lead of the ball game last weekend. And here's the blanket coverage denying Tyron Ralph. They'll keep it on the ground here. He's able to stay upright. Great balance from Omar Allen. Again, keeping that ball on the ground has been very effective and helpful for the Golden Lions. And right there, just keep churning. As long as you maintain possession, that's that cardinal sin. Do not turn that ball over to your opponent. And Jim Allen did score in this game last year against Southern. 
That was his only carry that day. He's going to carry a bigger piece of the load here today. Does not go down easy. It'll take the entire defensive team photo for the Jaguars to finally bring him down. Stop of first down attempt by the Golden Lions. Looked like there was a little promise, but then. And that on third down is going to set up fourth and two. And the Golden Lions are going to let the opening quarter expire and they'll make their decision on the other side of this break. UAPB for the first time trailing today. One quarter in the books. Jaguars up by four. Campbell era officially underway. Past two years, assistant head coach at UAPB. Finally, all the bucks stopped with him. And boy, was he so proud when we talked to him this week of what his student athletes have done discipline-wise ever since they arrived back on campus in the fall. By now, you know how much is asked of these student athletes. All the self-discipline required during this global pandemic just to make sure that they can suit up when game day finally comes. And boy, have they not only been self-disciplined, but excited for this game, so focused. And as for today, he said it's all about Crossing your T's, dotting your I's, and making sure every little assignment is taken care of if you're going to pick up that season opening win on the road against Southern. You're absolutely right. And uh, looking at the keys to the game, I think UAPB did get off to a good start. Uh, Southern, you know, they got a good offense, and uh, they could have had two tallies, but good defensive stance by the Golden Lions. And then uh, the ground and pound has been effective, although a couple nice pass plays as well. Uh, from the Golden Lions and Skyler Perry. So, competitive game as we start the second quarter. Well, there is Skelton led the Jaguars on a 98 yard touchdown drive. Their last time with the football back in the first quarter. So, here we are underway, second quarter. Uh, a short carry from Devin Ben. That's his first carry since the fumble on the opening drive. And this doesn't go for much. That's a very good play by Kobe Watts. The linebacker coming in and tackling a good rusher low. Watts from a Texas high school powerhouse. They're going to say that's a forward pass. As they were looking for Devin Ben out of the backfield. Now a flag is going to come in at the end of the play. It's going to back up the Jaguars. Golden Lions immediately reacted when they saw that flag. They liked it. And I think a late, it, it, well, the, the penalty actually was for a push after the block to the ground. And uh, so. Southern actually had two chances <laughs> to come away without a penalty there on a play that went for not much at all. No gain, actually. And it was like Shaq barely touching Muggsy Bogues or you swatting a gnat. <laughs> Sometimes you got to play to the officiating crew, and it worked for the Golden Lions. Third and long. Adversity here. Skelton will try to get some of it back. Not much doing, and Skelton needs to be careful now. Obviously frustrated, stopped for a loss there on third and 22, but the Golden Lions, as long as they play within themselves, are going to get this football back. Well, that's true, but the tackle had the helmet come off of the signal caller, and Skelton got up because of that. Now, sometimes that's just because of... And he's going to pick up another flag exiting the field. Well, some... Yeah, there's. Uh, I believe they're going to get Skelton for putting a shoulder into another Golden Lion while he was heading to the sideline. The 
the Jaguars have been able to move the football better than the Golden Lions overall today, but they've gotten in their own way. To say the least, and you do not, again, one unsportsmanlike conduct is one thing, but again, it puts you on notice that the next one removes you from the game. And I've been removed from one football game. It only took me one, but uh, it happens. And it's because, as you mentioned, the emotion and you don't think uh, as you should. Let's put it that way. So Barajas will be punting out of his own end zone, hoping for a good snap. Golden Lions should be getting this ball around midfield. He'll get it away. And Ralph opting not to return, and that's just fine. Golden Lions are going to start with this ball on the 46 in Southern Territory, down by just four early second quarter. Golden Lions have the football. There's a couple of unsportsmanlike fouls that derailed that drive for the Jaguars, including that 15 yards right there. So Golden Lions with a chance to strike back, and now we've got a whistle before the snap. And this may be procedure against. It's an illegal shift. Shift. Whoa. And it, no penalty, I believe. Actually, they just need to reset things. So it is first and 10. This snap inside Southern Territory. Perry. Ralph able to squeeze it in. First down, about a 15 yard gain to the 30 of Southern. Again, Southern giving UAPB a very short field to work with. Got to take advantage of that. First down picked up in a nice quick play. Getting the ball out of the hand of the quarterback is going to be to the benefit of both teams. But here you see UAPB getting the ball almost to the 30-yard line of Southern. From the 31. The lefty Perry wants it all downfield. Just through the fingertips as he was looking for Wilkes. Second time that he had Wilkes in the end zone, this time open, and Wilkes just could not haul it in. I tell you, that's where you want the ball, where only your receiver can get it. Nice separation at the end. It would have been a little tough, but I tell you, Wilkes would tell you, I should have made that catch. Yeah, he wants another opportunity. Now second and ten. Keeper. One play later, Skyler Perry is in for the touchdown. Well, if you can't throw it to someone, why don't you just take it yourself in a great inside fake of a handoff, and then the quarterback with a great decision scampers untouched into the end. Well, barely touched inside the five into the end zone. The junior out of the Big Easy back in his home state. Able to punch it in to reclaim the lead for the Golden Lions. Yeah, if it's if it's two-hand touch, he's still in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great response by the Golden Lions. And look, that right there is just two mental mistakes from Southern that equates to six, maybe seven points for the Golden Lions. And those aren't penalties because of play. That's more mental. Uh, mental, emotional, as here's Perry fooling everybody and even our crew not immune briefly. <laughs> nice recovery. And that's what you need. It was a great running lane because of the fake inside to the running back who sold the fake all the way in and through the line of scrimmage, which allowed his quarterback to therefore keep the ball left side and then, again, make it a foot race. 20 to 30 yards, it's, e it's even shorter than a 40, and you just really like that distance because you don't feel like you're ever going to get tired from 30 yards in. Pivniska will come on for the extra point. And he's already converted on a field goal today from a little over 20 yards out. As a left-footed kicker will try to Stretch this back to a three-point lead for the second time today for the Golden Lions on the road. UAPB, oh, what a long offseason. Last week postponed, finally game day. 
and they have the lead here early second quarter. Dawson Odom sees his Jaguars right now trailing by three. The Lions capping their second scoring drive of the opening half. As Doc Gamble sees Skylar Perry out for a little afternoon stroll into the end zone on this Saturday afternoon. Lincoln Rose, Steve Foster, great to have you with us. Great to have college football here in the spring as well. And there's something to this. You wish maybe the FCS could compete each year in the spring and have the spotlight, but you're mindful in reality how important those guarantee games are back in the fall against FBS programs. And it would be hard to make up that kind of money. Only well, exposure to that. So Pivniska after splitting the uprights for a second time today with the extra point a moment ago. And this will be a Southern touchback. And let's see if the Jaguars can regain focus again. It's a Jaguars offense we've already seen. Can go 98 yards on a scoring drive. You know they can move the football. Let's see if they come back out refocused here. Well, again, whatever can hurt you can also help you. And you would think now that you would want Ladarius Skelton get back going as he somewhat contributed to the field position and the opportunity for the Golden Lions in their last sequence would put them into the end zone and ahead 10-7. And Steve, we're moving in the wrong direction. And again, a little surprising because Southern has had the opportunity to play and win a ball game prior to today. And it's mentioned as well, Southern only home game this season due to the schedule. New quarterback for Southern as John Lampley is in. And he'll fire a strike to build some confidence right up the middle, about a six yard, maybe seven yard gain. As he finds McLean. So let's just see how Lampley fares and whether this is to regroup this team after Skelton, their preseason all-conference quarterback, picked up that unsportsmanlike conduct at the end of their last possession. And Lampley, a fourth-year junior. Second and a long three. And it's about to be an even longer conversion on third down coming up. The carry there, drawn Sims, stopped in the backfield. Yeah, Aikens comes up. Number 48, and does a great job of corralling the rusher. Gets low, and he also gets a little help from Isaac Peppers. Aikens, your Mike linebacker, sophomore out of Marion, Arkansas. Loss of a few, here's third and six with Sims joining Lampley in the backfield. Lampley finds Sims, looking to extend this drive. Nice extra effort as the Jaguars getting closer to midfield and will get to stay on the football field to continue this drive. And a great decision by the quarterback, as you mentioned, coming in and a really good catch and first down pickup. From the 44-yard line, it'll be a struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10 coming up, and you have one Jaguar slow to get up. Jalen Thigpen was in on the stop, and right now the concern is for Travis Tucker, who we saw lay a huge lick on a block back in the first quarter, and favoring that right leg. And the Jaguars have a chance to claim their second lead of the half. If they can punch Swan in again, or at least tie it up, if they're going to use their special teams player of the week in the SWAC, Cesar Barajas for a field goal. Again, right now, everybody looking at Travis Tucker, the tight end. Jaguars officially 1-0 UAPB playing their first game of the year. Again, both these teams will be picking up a victory without even taking the field later this year when their Alcorn State game lands on their schedule. And there you see just rolling up on the back of the tight end, always a scary moment. And hopefully he'll be able to bounce back. Yeah, if they, if they took care of him properly, 
prior to the game, and he got taped up. This may be something that the tight end can walk off because he certainly wasn't going to be able to dance to Candy Rain by Soul For Real. <laughs> so again, here is John Lampley in at quarterback. Completed his first pass of the drive. This time we'll call his own number and just tripped up. Otherwise, it's probably a first down take. Aikens again, this time spoiling the carry from Lampley. Still a nice game. Yeah, it was. Again, when you roll out, you want to break that contain. It gives you a clear view of what's going on downfield. And if you don't have anyone to throw to, at least get some positive yardage. As you mentioned, if not tripped up, could have been a first down. Third and three from midfield. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. Not going to happen. The Golden Lions defense answers the call. And there will be a decision to make here at midfield for the Jaguars, currently trailing by a field goal. I think they probably put, but a great defensive stop by the Golden Lions as there was nowhere to run as Ben, the ball carrier, trying to spin himself away from a pursuing Golden Lions defense to no avail. The front seven all over him in the backfield. Aikens with that 48 on his back again was in on the play. Absolutely. He was a menace on that last drive. And Barajas into punt. Last time we saw him punt, he was back in his own end zone. Let's see if he can pin the Golden Lions back on their own two like they did earlier. I have a timeout before the punt. 9.47 still to go in this opening half. A good one on this Saturday afternoon in the SWAC. UAPB about to get the football back already with a three-point lead. And last we saw Southern, they were lined up to punt. And we anticipate with the same personnel, Barajas included, that that is still the game plan here as they have the ball at midfield. I tell you, one of the keys win on third down. I say that, they're going to bring the offense out. <laughs> and I don't think there's a lot of downside to this decision. I was going to say, that can also extend the fourth down, Lincoln, and fourth and three. Here, the Golden Lions do not jump off sides. Correct. They can't hear me. Lampley on fourth and three. And Lampley has the first down after all of that and then some. Still untouched out at the 15-yard line. Jaguars go for it on fourth down as Lampley finds his tight end, Ethan Howard, the freshman. Ethan Howard made himself available, fourth and three, and Lampley extending the play with his legs, comes near side and finds a wide open freshman. On the ground, boy, they were celebrating here in Mumford as if it was a touchdown. It certainly almost felt like one. This was on fourth and three. Lampley had nothing to work with and then finally found his big man and a great touch on the football, so it was easy to haul in. As you mentioned, the freshman tied in number 86, Howard. Now second and 12 after losing two on that last carry. Again, your backup quarterback, John Lampley, coach's decision to make the change. And Devin Ben just gets a couple yards back. It's gonna be third and 10. Good pursuit by the defense of the Golden Lions. Tough run, but not much as the running lanes close quickly. Well, any points on this drive will be a victory for Southern after they converted the fourth down, but they would love to get back into the end zone and reclaim the lead. Lampley joined by Ben out of the shotgun. Looks right the entire time. And it's a touchdown strike for Southern. They reclaim the lead. Lampley takes over and finds McLean for the touchdown. And that was a very good pass to the red shirt senior. 13 yards and a spin into the end zone. And, it, you know, again, you look at Lampley, very comfortable in the pocket. Throws a nice, easy ball to catch. And then a couple of maneuvers and a spin into the end zone. That's been the uh, 
move of choice, hitting the B button if you're playing PlayStation or the like. Rahas, two for two today on extra points. Get, gives the Jaguars a four point lead after the quarterback change. 14-10 over UAPB. SWAC football schedule presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And again, just to prove college football is no fluke on this weekend in March, we've got plenty more great weekends full of SWAC football coming your way. Next time we see the Golden Lions, it'll be in Scrambling State in a couple of weekends from now. And of course, the Jaguars will venture into Lone Star State to take on Texas Southern in a couple of weekends. Barajas with a couple of extra points today after a pair of touchdown drives for his Southern Jaguars. And the Golden Lions will set up on their own 29-yard line. A smart play there by the return team. You have to get the opportunity to make a catch. And instead of getting blown up, you can go to a knee. It cons it's considered... Uh, a fair catch, of course. Uh, that's kind of old school way of doing it, Lincoln, but it allows you to make a catch because a kickoff is a free kick, meaning that whoever recovers that football, it's their ball, not like a, a punt per se. I believe that was Jeremy Brown, a tight end. Casually, we'll just say an up back with the fair catch, just out of self defense. And you hear the crowd's reaction, a big lick. As that one, courtesy of Caleb Carter, second team preseason all swack, the fifth year senior out in New Orleans, but there was a flag right about the same time. I think you were taking a look on the replay. And was it in fact targeting? I, I would have to imagine he stays eligible when they take a look at that. And I'm glad they do because that looked like a good form tackle on a smaller player. And of course, you're going to have to get lower. That was not somebody. And again, I, I tell people, if you're old school, we used to call it spearing. Now they, they call it targeting. But again, this was a defender looking to get down and make a wrap-up tackle against the more diminutive, I would say, player. Look, I, multiple flags were thrown, but you and I have helped USA Football, who really had the initiative for heads-up tackling, and yes. that looked like a tackle that they would approve of. I, I would think so, and again, you know, I don't like getting tackled, and I especially don't like to get tackled. I have memories of people leading with the helmet. There it looks like a good play from a taller defender on a shorter offensive man out in space. You're allowed to blow up a running back. Well, I don't like that receiver, yes, you are. But, <laughs> but he does not do it with the helmet. He does not do it with a hit high on the head, neck, or shoulder area. He put his shoulder right into the chest of the ball handler, the ball carrier. But what you'd wind up doing if you did not get any kind of leverage is wind up trying to grab the shoulder pads and just spin a guy. There you have a defender actually looking to have technique on a tackle, leading more so with his chest and shoulder pads into an offensive receiver. So here's what's on the line here, a 15-yard penalty and a disqualification of Caleb Carter. Let's see if they reverse it and remove both of those punishments. Yeah. And that's the right call. I get it full speed. You see one guy blowing up another, and you think it must have been a vicious hit. But this is as good as it gets from Caleb Carter. It was a vicious hit. It just isn't a hit that should be penalized. So instead of first down on the penalty with Mr. Carter watching from the sidelines the rest of this ball game. Golden Lions battling on second and nine, airing it out downfield, and boy, if they had linked up, I don't know if anybody ultimately stops Dewan Miller, but just beyond his fingertips. Well, I tell you, 
cannot fault the quarterback in putting the ball where only his guy can catch it. You know, you have to be a receiver that has to make those finger tip tight grabs and you may do it later on in the season you know if I give the pass it's because it's the first game however good choices by the quarterback now the receivers got to come through all right third and nine they just need the 39 yard line to keep this drive moving and you saw the pressure on Perry and as a result the Golden Lions are going to give this ball right back to the Jaguars and Southern will have a chance to add a little insurance on the scoreboard for the first time today Good choice of receiver. Again, that ball just thrown just a little bit far for a receiver to haul that in. But again, the choices are good by the yeah, credit the back, credit yes. the pressure from the front seven from Southern. Not giving them a chance. Josh Sanchez back to punt. Sees that he has 10 teammates. Remembers he's the 11th and says we're good to go. And opting not to field it off the hop, and the Jaguars are going to lose 20-plus yards on that decision. And the Golden Lions will wait for the winds to blow that one down to about the three-yard line. So Jaguars are going to be pinned back, but we do have an indication flag is down. And let's see if this helps the Jaguars or cuts into those three yards. So half the distance, so it's going to be a yard and a half from their own goal line. The crazy thing is, you know, right there at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> Let's take a look. Uh, here's the SWAC preseason poll presented by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket Southern, your favorites in the West Division. And, of course, Alcorn State was the favorite in the East. They opted not to participate this spring, so Alabama A&M now will have the target on their back. Uh, UAPB and Southern both over here in the West Division. Alabama A&M, one of their finest alums, John Stallworth of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second time today that the Jaguars are starting a drive, taking snaps in their own end zone. This time Lampley again, second straight drive that he's your quarterback for Southern. It led to a touchdown after they opted to go for it on fourth down last drive, and that decision paid off. So Lampley appears to be the guy, at least for now, as he's joined in the backfield by Geron Sims. So second and eight from the four-yard line. Sims will get just past the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one before he is tackled and helped back up by Colby Watts. And a knifing thick pin from the secondary as well. This is a chance for the Gold Lions defense to help their offense if they can force a three and out. Remember the UAPB touchdown in this ball game was a drive that started in Jaguars territory. We'd love to have another similar opportunity here. Never had a chance. Golden Lions are getting this football back, and it won't be the first and likely the last time we say the name of Akins. Mama, there goes that man. He was all in the backfield, and I tell you, you just think that Akins knows the play. Nobody touches him, and then a host of Golden Lions secure the rusher, Ben at about the one yard line, Lincoln. So everybody loves to talk about the RPO, but what's it called when one of your options appears to be just handing off to the linebacker? Not good. Yeah. Akins blows it up, 
Barajas is not even going to get all the yardage he would like here for this punt. And all the pressure now is on your deep snapper. Yeah, I don't think you're too bothered by that delay of game. That's going to cost you, uh, depending on metric system or what we use here in the States. Fractional that, yardage. That's going to be inches. I'm not convinced they even move the football. Right. Let's see if the Golden Lions are coming for it. Brajas, that is going to be a safety. UAPB tax two on the scoreboard and they're about to get this football back on offense as well. I wasn't certain that Barajas didn't also step out before that punt, but the Golden Lions with the block punt sent it back through the end of the end zone for the score. Looked like Singleton, number 31, coming through, playing on the punt team. And the pressure coming, and I think you're right. Well, his he, to his credit, Barajas kept his heel up. So he stayed in play, but it's a moot point after the block. I almost would have agreed with you that he stepped out, but yeah, either way, six one way, half a dozen the other. Two points for UAPB on a great special team play. Another look. Singleton. Isaiah Singleton, the junior linebacker. Puts two points up for the Golden Lions. How will that factor into the final outcome today? And again, now you have the free kick from Southern. You don't just give up those two points. You have to still give this football back over to UAPB. And of course, the guy who handles the free kick is the guy who just had Singleton in his face. Funny how that works. It's like a quarterback who throws a pick six and now has to trot back out with the offense to start a new draw. Uh, at least for Barajas, there'll be no pressure. He chooses to tee this ball up instead of punt it away. And the Gold Lions will start on their own 39. Good thing is they have the ball back and some momentum. Looking, you know, with a field goal to go up by one. Pater. You yeah. got even more. So the Golden Lions defense comes through. Now time for the Jaguars defense to continue to step oh, up. Chris this was a Jaguars team that at the time was dominant last week against Alabama State in Montgomery. Anchored by Jordan Lewis, who hasn't quite yet be, been able to leave his mark on Skylar Perry. He's coming for him. But Perry stays upright, hits his man first down with the extra effort from Dewan Miller. A little sidestep, picks up the extra yards needed to move the sticks. Good pitch and catch again, the timing. And you like to see this here early in the season, first game for the Golden Lions. Uh, Jacoby Petillion thought that he had him a couple yards shy of the first down. Then the joystick happened. Quarterback keeps it. Perry already with one touchdown run today into Jaguars territory and close to another first down. If not a first down and a good decision made by the signal caller, as you mentioned, a good fake and then quickly upfield. And finally halted by Khalil White. Tossed into the backfield and the burden there was going to be on Clark to make something happen. It would not be the worst thing if Southern took a little time off the clock and took some air out of that football while trying to march down for a score with four minutes to go here in the opening half. Well, the way that the Golden Lions are playing defense, maybe you want to score and get another pump block. Perry, again, they keep him clean. Again, he has a wide open Tyron Ralph for a first down. And again, these passes, you know, for a first game, again, this isn't a freshman or sophomore, it's a junior. You know, throwing the ball over defenders and dropping it right into the arms of the intended wide receiver, showing great decision-making and touch. 
Again, the left side of that offensive line for UAPB. First team all SWAC selections here in the preseason as they have been able to keep Skylar Perry up front. There's 12 men on the field for Southern if he would snap this football. Not going to happen. Somebody called the timeout. <laughs> Man, you would love for Skylar Perry to have recognized that the Jaguars were gift wrapping five yards for them right there. A free play if he gets that ball snapped. I think that was a coupon. <laughs> Glad you said it. I still to this day don't know if it's a coupon or a coupon. I think it depends where you yeah. grow up in the great United States. I, I think that's the answer a lot of people in Louisiana and Arkansas give other folks about how you pronounce things. Correct. So UAPB got the safety on a block punt a moment ago. That pulls them within two of Southern. They are threatening here, first and 10, with 3.15 to go, 3.16 to go in the opening half on the 22-yard line. I'm appreciating the music. Gap band from the actual band, now over the PA, some cameo. Uh, PA wanted to thank you for donating your Zoom <laughs> with, your, with your playlist on it. We weren't sure how to flip the cassette over to side B for your other playlist. Second half. First and 10 from the 22. Golden Lions threatening to reclaim the lead. Perry, just the way they draw it up. Now the ball squirts loose. This will be Golden Lions football, and Omar Allen, if he had kept his bet, no, they're going to say incomplete. They're going to say Allen never secured that football in the first place. And that was the question I had. And the line judge right there, she makes the call on top of the play. Golden Lions have no timeouts. They have no way of encouraging this to be reviewed. It could still be reviewed upstairs. Yeah. Again, here in the college game, technically every play is looked at again, and it's whether or not they're going to look for an extended review, and that is the case here. I think I'm going to agree, <laughs> and this is unusual, with... Nope, incomplete. With, with the line judge. I, I know there were a couple steps taken, but I don't think there was ever an opportunity of a secured reception. Yeah, that's not even the good old-fashioned did he make a football move. That ball, that ball was never secured. Even if this is Des Bryant, that's an incomplete pass. For a second, you may want to say... Right here, Lincoln, right there. But and then the ball is released. You just never know with an officiating crew. But uh, I think incomplete is the safe call. And I think by today's standards, where we are these days with what is, what isn't a catch, uh, you understand that an incomplete pass. We'll find out if we're wrong here. It will be accepted in person and online on March 26. We encourage all fans and supporters to tune in and be a faithful watch and YouTube to celebrate with us. It's a fair call. It's a fair call. So it is second and ten. Golden Lions still with their eye on the prize, looking for the full seven points on this drive. Skyler Perry with a good decision, Lincoln. And now you got to have your teammates help you out and execute. But a great decision to drop it off to the running back there on first down. Perry, back to Ralph, and just unable to tiptoe down that sideline. It'll be third and two coming up. Ralph definitely knowing to that's the primary objective of a receiver. And so he makes the catch, tries to tight rope there on the far side. Now do you look for that strike into the end zone or you just try to pick up this long yard? I try to get the yard. Close to two full yards here on third down. Perry, down the middle, what a strike. Touchdown, Golden Lions. It's Josh Wilkes, third time's the charm. Absolutely, and a great pass. The fake holds the linebackers on that second level just enough so they don't disrupt the passing lane and a really great precision pass by Perry. I don't care if it comes out. It looks like old school Billy Kilmer 
but it doesn't need to be a perfect spiral because it's in the perfect spot for a touchdown reception. But as you mentioned, Josh Wilkes. That coverage could not have been any better from Southern's Jordan Eastling, the cornerback. The pass was on the money, and the Golden Lions have their largest lead of the day in this their season opener on the road in Baton Rouge. So Josh Wilkes, they had looked to him a couple of times at time, able to dial up number three. And that's the first touchdown through the air from Perry after having success on the ground. Have to imagine they're looking at the ESPN app. Watching the replay there. The Golden Lions got the safety. And here's the starting quarterback who is still QB1. Skyler Perry with his legs, with his arm. And credit his O-line, they have kept him clean. Perry would take them into the end zone for the first time. And he would also share the will. Ralph would help set them up outside the red zone. And their most recent trip to Pater. And this is a nice season debut from Skylar Perry, who again a year ago was splitting snaps with then teammate Shannon Patrick. Perry's numbers last year against Southern. Again, just an interception, no touchdowns. It was 9 of 14 passing, got sacked three times, and that's the difference today. But his offensive line's been able to do for him. You're absolutely right. And the quick deliveries to receivers downfield and the great decision-making when it comes to that, do I hand it off to the running back or do I become the running back myself? Southern picked off UAPB quarterbacks last year four times. This was a defense that continued that kind of form last week in their victory. And here's Lampley for a third straight drive, your quarterback for Southern after taking over for Skelton. You have two and a half minutes to put something together. Southern will get the football to start the second half after deferring here in the opening frame. Well, a good defensive stop here right at the line of scrimmage again against Ben. To get about three yards, I'd like to get four on first down if you can. Lampley has time, eyes downfield, just unable to make the tremendous catch. Has a nice job getting open by Valian, the sophomore from Alexandria, Louisiana, just could not make the sensational catch. I like the touch put on the ball by Lampley, but just out of the reach of his receiver. And his receiver, as you mentioned, Lincoln, broke wide open. You'll understand if Lampley's still developing a little bit of chemistry with this first string unit. That's true, but it, I like what he's done, and the decisions are correct. Now you just got to drop that ball into the arms of your receivers. Ben stays in the backfield to block for Lampley. Fires a dart down the middle, in and out of the hands of Hinton. That one's right on the money. You know, that one was bullseye. It's a couple of open receivers. Now it's third and 10. And good blocking up front. And that ball's just right on the money. I mean, it was a tight spiral. Should have been caught. And I know that Hint would tell you he should have caught it. I said third, pardon me, it's fourth and seven after that three yard gain on first down. And Barajas, who had his last punt blocked, but remember, he didn't even have the luxury of being this far from the line of scrimmage the last time out. A low punt. This will be tough to field. Nice job by Barajas. As this one down inside the 25. And the Golden Lions, though. Steve, you said, hey, why not score quickly and go out there and get another block punt? Well, they didn't block the punt, but they're going to have almost two minutes. However, no timeouts. It's the Golden Lions offense that's going to need to utilize some first downs to briefly stop the clock. Well, you practice this at the end of practice. <laughs> and with, 
what you see so far out of Skyler Perry. I don't think he's going to really have any jitters or get nervous. I just think he's going to see if he can get in a rhythm for at least a field goal attempt. What he can't afford is a turnover here and giving the Jaguars a chance to claim points of their own right before halftime. They'll keep it on the ground with Clark. And that clock will start melting down. Southern does have two timeouts if they think they can get a three and out. Especially maybe after this play, if it goes for zero or short yardage from the Golden Lions. Perry. Drops it down, gets a block. Last catch was in the end zone. This one will just go out of bounds uh, to stop the clock from Josh Wilkes. Seemed like the uh, yeah. shooting crew was saying continue the clock, but I think he stepped out at some point. It's his forward progress stop before going out of bounds. That would be why that clock keeps going, yes. So timeout Southern, who actually would have preferred that he be ruled out of bounds. But understand, just because he went out of bounds, it's after he had pinballed after his forward progress was achieved. Right. And so that means Southern now with just one timeout. But they're hoping to get the ball back after this third and four coming up. So remember, one of those two touchdowns on the board for Southern was how they had a 98-yard drive culminate. Southern's been able to move the football at times, but also have been their own opposition today at other times. Golden Lions have just stuck with the game plan. We mentioned even though they have a new head coach, okay, it's a familiar Jaguar name on the sidelines and Doc Gamble. And this would be quite the start to his head coaching career in Pine Bluff with UAPB. If they could knock off the favorites in their own division on the road today. No stoppage, I'm not sure what that's going to be about. Uh, this is probably the least favorite use of review, and it may simply be presumably the forward progress, whether or not a timeout needed to be burned by Southern. Right. And uh, now I will trust it is reviewable because they are going to go ahead and review it, but. I think when you step out under your own accord, I recognize exactly what you said about forward progress, Lincoln. I, I think they're being told probably they cannot be reviewed. Or the, t or the clock. Oh. Okay, so that wasn't really a review. That was just making sure the clock was correct and giving Southern credit for all the time after they called the timeout. Multiple choice yeah. It's a little bit easier. None of the above. <laughs> if you had none of the above, you, you outscored both myself and Steve on that one. Let's keep it going, Jaguar fans. Deep fist, All right, Jaguars need a stop here to give themselves a chance to put up some late points. See if Skylar Perry can pick up another first down on third and four. On the ground, this will be Golden Lions football. Clock will briefly stop to move the sticks, and then it's a question of how aggressive will UAPB choose to be here? Well, good. Nice quick hitter up the middle, and it, it was kind of a 50-50 deal about will the first down be picked up? It sure was. And now again, the Golden Lions on the move. Perry. Downfield has his man back to Wilkes. Wow. <laughs> I tell you, Skyler Perry has been sharp, and I'm telling you, real sharp with his passing. Gold Lions, if they hurry up, can snap this ball with almost a full minute, about 15 yards out. They're marking it at the 13. Take nothing away from Wilkes with the body control and the catch. Golden Lions can make this a two-score ball game going into the locker room. Perry throws a little low. Did he make the catch? The catch was made, but I don't know if uh, the knee was down. I think it's going to be first and goal. Southern would love for this to be reviewed. Does this ball skip off the ground? Oh, it looks like a catch. 
Maybe even been a touchdown. They're going to review it. Fair enough. So much going on. Of course, the clock would have briefly stopped for the first down. But that appeared to be a legitimate catch, not just that, but by the time he actually secured it. Could have been in the end zone, huh? It had been in the end zone. Great effort. Hands are underneath that ball. Great effort. So there's two things. Is it a catch, and where is he? And what an ending to the opening half this could be for UAPB. I think we know this is a catch now, and that ball looks like it, again, barely has to graze the edge of the end zone via score. I would understand if they still kept the ball out, saying that was not conclusive, and your first and goal from an inch. I, I could live with that. But what an effort to make that catch. And what a statement from UAPB. And the offensive coordinator these days for UAPB is a former head coach in his own right back in his days at Miami, Ohio, and Don Treadwell. And... He has done quite well with his QB1 today, Skyler Perry, leading this offense. That veteran offensive line in front of him. Perry's done a nice job sharing the rock. One more look. This is ruled a catch on the field. That ball may have even been tipped by Cotton, the defensive tackle, former LSU Tiger. Getting to stay in Baton Rouge here at Southern. <coughs> you can never overstate how hard it is for a receiver to catch a ball after either having a hand pass in front of him or a ball being tipped the last well, second. The tip changes the rotation, which is a little bit more difficult. I would explain why that ball took a dive. I think the biggest question here is where do you spot that ball? If the play stands, it's a catch, but not a touchdown. Will they change it to a score? After review, the ball on the field stands. The field pass. There simply was not enough to confirm, to state that it was in the end zone. But this is going to be first and goal with 49 seconds. No timeouts for UAPB and no more first downs to stop the clock. Perry. That ball is intercepted. Southern gets the stop for a second straight week and they're going to say no, it's incomplete. Oh, we thought Chase Foster for a second straight week was going to have a pick for the Jaguars. Last week it went for a touchdown. This week almost saved a touchdown. They're going to say no, he trapped it. Yeah, that one hopped it. Second and goal. Handoff. And the Jaguars defense comes up with another stop and this clock will run. Leading the surge up front, Colin Givens, the sophomore D lineman from Shreveport. I thought that would have been a great time for Perry to heal that ball again. He's been so effective on that. This has to be a pass, doesn't it? Not necessarily. Perry keeping it himself. If they want to have a chance for a field goal, if they don't get in, Perry looks right, throws it back to the end zone. Feet are down. Ball is caught. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Harry Ballard the third, showing off why he is preseason first team all swack. And great concentration, the tightrope right before the end line in the back of the end zone. And this ball looks like it's kind of catapulted. Nonetheless, what a great catch. That was right where it needed to be. Either he catches it for a score or it goes out the back of the end zone and you bring out your field goal unit with the clock stopped. How about the Golden Lions with those last two scoring drives? 
Last three scores all going the way of UAPB when you factor in the safety as well. Are they going to review this? If you don't get the touchdown, you just bring your field goal unit out and get something. You would think so. Only need one foot in the college game, even though we're playing here in the spring. Does he secure it? That looks good to me. I think I think play. both big toes were still down when he hauled that ball in. Check this out. We're about to be getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, ready, ready. Check this out. And again, I may describe this pass as catapulted, but it needed to loop over defenders. I think this is a touchdown, Lincoln. So not strong enough video evidence for them to confirm it, but Golden Lions aren't going to pick a fight over the terminology. This is a touchdown. We're going to see this ball where only Ballard can catch it. Great effort. Ivniski, perfect today. A 12-point lead for UAPB, their largest of the day. I'll point out that's their largest lead of the season. And two seconds still to go here in the opening half. One of those squib squibbers, boom, boom, boom. Let someone touch it, clock runs. You go to half. As you mentioned, Southern will receive the second half kick. Well, I think all three facets of the game for UAPB have to be pretty pleased with how they've stepped up here in their season opener. Well, no one's ever won a football game in the first half. However, Coach Gamble should say he's on track to get his first victory as the head coach and not the assistant head coach. You anticipate a squib to try to take those remaining two seconds off the clock. Yes. What you don't want is a solid return because even if Southern sets up their offense with two seconds, you imagine they're just taking a knee to avoid any turnover. Uh, Zach Pibniska gave UAPB their first lead on the opening drive with his lone field goal today. And that huge wind blowing the ball off the tee. So now I think the, the rule is they may let you they get have two. One more try right, at it. Right. But if not, that holder comes into play. Pivniska knows the rules, criminal justice major. <laughs> They'll kick it deep. Jaguars with a chance for the return. It's all or nothing here for Southern. Down by 12. And that 12-point lead will go into the locker room. As the gold lines of UAPB turning some heads in their season opener. On the road in Baton Rouge. They are up by two scores in their 2021 spring season opener. We've reached halftime. Skylar Perry, quarterback for UAPB. Two touchdowns through the air and one more on the ground calling his own number. Golden Lions. Ball on ESPN is presented by Credit Versio. Get your credit score up to where it should be with Credit Versio. Visit creditversio.com. And by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. Both teams re-emerging from the locker room. Golden Lions, a safety and a couple of touchdowns tacked on. Take this 12-point lead. More of the same, please, if you are first-year head coach, Doc Gamble, talking to your men. As for Southern, Dawson Odoms, of course, ninth year at the helm of the sideline here in Baton Rouge. Look, he knows he has a team that can battle back and overcome a 12-point halftime deficit. He has seen this team move the ball up and down the field, and everything that they need to change is easily fixed. Well, most of it is mental, Lincoln. 
And so you're absolutely right. Focus in on what's going on on the field, not picking up penalties that aren't because of play on the field, but stoppage of play penalties, you know, mental mistakes, personal fouls and sportsmen like those types of things absolutely can cl get cleaned up and the adjustments made at halftime. Jaguars again won the toss of the coin flip at the start of the ball game, defer to the second half, so they will get the football first here. Happy for these family members who get to come out and support their favorite Jaguars and Golden Lions alike. Nice distraction for them. And we will brag on the bands. They are mid-season form. I tell you, they're playing some nice classics and some music that's getting the crowd. And it's good to see folks in the crowd, in the stands. As mentioned, Southern only with one home game this season here in the spring of 2021. Might even request a little bit more of the band right now. What you're hearing is coming over the speaker system on the video board. It was working earlier. <laughs> had the cameo going. Had the soul for real early on. So maybe they need to make a little halftime adjustment, Lincoln, in Baton Rouge. Of course, Southern University hosting the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. And the Golden Lions up. A little surprised, but again, loved what Coach Gamble said. Their team was ready. They've lived in hotels, overcome adversity, busted pipes, and now they take a lead into the second half. It's a big drive coming up. Look at that coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Back underway in Baton Rouge. Where will the Jaguars set up for this first Drive out to about their 34-yard line. Who will be the quarterback for Southern to start the second half? We saw both Skelton as well as Lampley have success. Bringing in Lampley appeared to be a message, if nothing else, but also was not much of a step down in terms of ability, and it will be Lampley's team coming out here for the second half. I think so. Right now, you do have some momentum. The ball's being moved, and... You know, the personal foul calls uh, on Skelton really hurt the offense and the entire team of Southern. Lampley trying to get Southern back on the board after, again, the last three scores have gone into the UAPB column, including a safety and a couple of touchdowns. And Lampley building some confidence again, trying to find a receiver. And ultimately, incomplete, so second and 10. And joined by Ben in the backfield. And Ben with Tyler Smith draped on his back, the big sophomore defensive end, finally able to drag him down to a halt. Again, Devin Ben. Preseason first team all SWAC selection. Fifth year senior out in New Orleans from John Curtis High. And here is third and five. And the Jaguars will keep this drive moving. About a 10 yard strike. As it's Corey Williams, the redshirt freshman, his first catch up towards midfield. Good decision made by Lampley, the quarterback. And now the chains still moving. Lampley under pressure, being pursued by Isaac Peppers. Lampley, though, buys himself time to dump it down. And that was no small feat finally to dial up Gerard Sims for a four-yard gain, making something out of what would have been worse than nothing. Yeah, that would have been a 10 to 15-yard loss. But again, the elusiveness shown by Lampley, composure, and a nice soft pass. The touch, again, to a running back, an open receiver, to get four yards on first down. 
on second and six. This time, Sims gets it the more traditional way. Running back, factoring in on the first two snaps of this set of downs. And a third and two coming up, Lampley in a hurry. Wants to catch Golden Lions out of position. Another first down, this time the strike over to Valiant. And that a much easier pass to receive and moves the, the chains, the sticks, you know, for that indication and the receiver gets two yards beyond it and knows once the ball is secured with the catch, you don't need to pick up any more yardage. So a great route and decision there by the wide receiver. So in Golden Lions territory from the 36, Lampley all the time and still throws the interception, picked off by Jalen Thigpen, the senior. And again, the reload. It looked like Lampley wanted to go over the middle, reloads and then comes back to the same receiver. Well, that gives the defense an opportunity to recover and that closing speed not only is good to tip away balls or make a tackle, it's also good. Golden Lions come up with another turnover. They'll get the ball for the first time in the third quarter. 12 point lead still intact. And they will now come out with this opening drive. Nice cutback and about a seven yard gain when it's all said and done there with Matthias Clark. And as you mentioned, Lincoln, a great defensive play by Jalen Thigpen diving for the interception and giving the ball back to the Golden Lions. And his best to bait Lampley, who again had plenty of time to see the field. Able to get out of the ankle tackle. The rest of this is gravy for Harry Ballard the third, picks up the first down and then some. Well, if you could step out of two tackles because you got two feet down in the first, or to end the first half with a touchdown, this is another great effort by the senior We'll give, again, his teammate Tyron Ralph a little credit for uh, whatever you want to call that block. It's called the stalk block. Just get in and tap dance and give your teammate an opportunity to make a cut and go, and that happened. But then a nice recovery by the Southern Jaguars. Big D tackle, Robert Square the third from right here in Baton Rouge. Not fooled at all. He's up with the stop. Catholic high here in... Baton Rouge, Louisiana, two-yard loss on the play. Perry, for the first time today, is introduced to Jordan Lewis. And with a little bit of help as well from Cordell Caldwell. Yes, and that's pressure off the corner. And Skyler Perry's going to have to recognize, here comes the rush, but also, I think it was going to be a screen and... There was no help as the Golden Lions did not set that play up well. And here come the Jaguars. That's your defensive player in the week in the SWAC this past week. Perry has a lot more time this time around, and he makes the Jaguars pay. They will extend this drive, converting a third and 18 as he finds Tyron Ralph. Ralph again. Goes downfield, gets more than enough for a first down, settles, sits down, and another great pass over defenders and in front of defenders. Skyler Perry has been on the mark with his passing. His, those mid-range passes have been excellent so far today. You always wonder how a quarterback responds after finally being rocked for the first time, and Perry just was able to shake it right off and convert on third and a mile. I think having the success in the first half and actually scoring himself does not leave this junior signal caller rattled at all. And again, even with no gain on first down, still moving his team in Southern Territory. Jordan Lewis is now on the right side of that defensive line. And it'll actually be Perry who throws a block to free up this return, still on his feet. Dewan Miller, so after Lewis had rocked Perry earlier. This time Perry doesn't shy away of screening off Lewis, who looked like he was all over that play. I tell you, a great misdirection on the double reverse there, Lincoln. 
and now the Golden Lions in the red zone again here early second half. Clark, Matthias Clark not going down on initial contact, getting everything he can. Yeah, a lot of spin moves. I like the fact still that the ball was protected as the rusher still with extra effort looking to get more yards. You hear the whistles? Man down. And as a result, Brian Jordan Jr. will have to come off the field for at least a play. Golden Lions, after getting a stop on defense, are marching on offense and threatening to grow their lead. At least for the moment, the score has not changed since halftime. The Jaguars got the ball first on their opening drive, marched successfully downfield until Jalen Thigpen picked off John Lampley. This now the first drive of the half for the Golden Lions looking to grow their lead. And Perry, even with the contact in the backfield, will be able to pick up maybe a yard. It's going to be third and about six coming up for UAPB. Got the ball on the right hash. You may look to get that, that slant that worked for a touchdown, Lincoln, or a rollout where Scholar Perry has an option to use his feet. He's accounted for three touchdowns today, all three scores for UAPB, including two through the air. That's going to be another first down, first and goal coming up after finding one of his favorite targets, Tyron Ralph. Tyron Ralph on the reception for the line. And that little, little athletic flick, getting the ball out. Listen, pick up the first down, move the chains, and now you have first and goal. Three plays before you'd have to think about kicking a field goal. And from three yards out, they'll pick up about a yard and a half with the handoff to Matthias Clark on first down. Ever forward. Ever forward. Let's see if the Jaguars stiffen up here. Perry looking for daylight. Perry looking for the corners in. His fourth touchdown, second rushing today. And again, we mentioned in the first half, Golden Lions were turning some heads, and now all of a sudden folks are wondering at home if the score is right that they're seeing on Twitter. That's absolutely correct, and right there, the fourth, as you mentioned, you got two of by land, two of by air, <laughs> and uh, the decision making of Skylar Perry and his pinpoint accuracy, especially on those mid-range passes, have been phenomenal so far today. Still mid-third quarter, however, Pivniska looking to remain perfect on extra points. 33-14. Both teams have had the football once in the third quarter. Advantage Golden Lions. Skylar Perry in again. Skylar Perry punching it in for another touchdown for UAPB as again they're picking near the bottom of the West Division. Right now looking to upset the favorites. Missed out on their game last week. Had to be postponed. Not for pandemic reasons, but still the aftermath of what most of the country calls winter, but states of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas refer to as natural disaster. The college football underway here in the spring. And let's see if the Jaguars can set themselves up here on special teams. They'll have another long field ahead. But again, Jaguars have shown they've been able to march downfield methodically, regardless of quarterback. They can move the football, unable to punch it in that last time because of the turnover that ultimately led to the touchdown for UAPB. You're right, and I tell you, Solomon Brooks, number 28 for the Golden Lions, staying in his lane and containing the return man of Southern. Did a great job from 
not allowing the corner to be turned and get to that sideline and make it a, a sprint. So a nice job done on special teams by UAPB. And Lampley, your quarterback. All the time in the world. I think we had a flag come flying in at the end of the play back in the backfield. Marquise McClain probably should have had that catch. Looked up just at the last minute and saw a 22, the freshman, ask you. But this looks like it may go against the Golden Lions. Personal foul on Isaac Peppers, the middle linebacker. Peppers pursuing Lampley in the backfield, and I think, you know, maybe one or two steps where he could have held up. And that's for the safety of the game. Lampley, a second generation SWAC athlete, his mom, a former standout basketball player at Alcorn State. She was the 1992 SWAC champion and SWAC defensive MVP. And the run from Draw Sims. Lampley's from Kennesaw in Georgia. A couple of states over. He's the starting quarterback for Southern entering that 2018 campaign. Again, he's shown a lot of maturity here today, but a coverage sack essentially is what that would have looked to be as credit UAPB despite all the time for the quarterback, nobody opened downfield. And Xavier Mitchell exerts himself, plays off a block, and number 16 for the Golden Lions. The top returning sack leader. And technically not sure if he got back to the line of scrimmage or not, but regardless, UAPB forcing a third and five. There's the man you started talking about coming into today. And we're going to have a timeout Golden Lions. They want to make sure they get off the football field after this snap. Absolutely. Coach Gamble, even though he himself being an offensive player, Big play coming up on third and five for Southern. Already trailing 33-14 at home. Golden Lions called that last time out. Again, they are not taking for granted a 19-point lead on the road here in the third quarter. Looking for a stop here on third and five. They've not been able to get to the quarterback very often. They'll bring pressure. But Lampley still composed, downfield, easy peasy. First down, strike to McLean. Well, and I think he may have been open because on the coverage, Thickpin may have hurt himself. Yeah, he saw the defensive player go down. Hobbled off, but a good pitch and catch for a first down. That was a must convert for Southern. Lampley hands off. And Sims picks up three. And Kobe Watts, you know, he's done a heck of a job. He may not be making all the tackles, but uh, the former DeSoto Eagle. Yeah, powerhouse in the state of Texas from the Dallas area. Second and seven. And Lampley will throw it just short, looking for a first down completion as he was targeting Tyler Kirkwood, the freshman who had one catch last week for seven yards. Kirkwood was coming back for the ball. It's just the ball was low. It was going to be difficult, even if you made a play on this uh, a low pass. You know, he couldn't have probably cut, kept his body or at least one foot in bounds prior to making the catch. Ampley had a little more time than he believed he had. You don't want to throw backwards and have it be all arm because it tends to not necessarily sail, but to actually go lower. Again, Lampley 
Steps through one tackle, finally does the smart thing to avoid the hit coming from Stanley Bentley. You say smart, but I think if he goes forward, he may have had the extra yard for a first down. I understand preservation is the key for a quarterback, but a great decision to tuck the ball and go. But I think if you don't slide, you may have had a first down. It's fourth and three. I suspect he would have been short either way. They will go for it here. Field goal is not going to do a lot for you in a 19-point ball game. The way UAPB has been able to find some scores. Again, they just need three to keep this drive alive. But Lampley wants more than that. He wants six. Instead, he's picked off. And I tell you what. I understand the impulse of Sean Steele wanting to intercept it. The senior from Arlington adds his second career pick against these Southern Jags, but look, the coaches would have been okay if he had just swatted it down. Absolutely. However, in that situation, you don't know where the receiver is. You're going up for the ball. Yep. You know, again, exactly so many right. times coaches will tell that defender, it's just as much yours as the offensive player. You know with an interception, the ball is yours. I absolutely agree. It was about 20 or 30 yards of field position, but you know now as the Golden Lions, that's your football. Golden Lions come up with their third forced turnover, two interceptions. The offense led by Skylar Perry is going to take this snap in their own end zone. Just got to get out of that end zone. And they'll do exactly that, about a yard gain. Don't want to get too fancy until you're outside of that light blue field. Levonsky Williams. A redshirt freshman running back. This is a chance for the Jaguars defense to come up with a big play. Could be used as a punt if you can get a three and out here if you're Southern. Perry, and just does that to make sure he can see third down. And that may have been a miscommunication nonetheless, better than, yes, and the quarterback signaling over to his sideline, that being Skylar Perry. I just wanted to get rid of that one, Coach. I didn't like what I saw. You can never fault a quarterback for doing that. You still don't have the amount of space that your punter would like. Let's see how conservative they are here. Trying to get that punter room, and that is a successful run, even though you're going to give this ball back over to Southern. So, again, you got the interception, denying Southern the score at least briefly. But because you pick it off at the one-yard line, it's a tough battle to get anything going on that drive. A three and out. Credit the Jaguars' defense as they're going to get this football back. Well, if you can flip this field position back and you're Southern, you can possibly get that 20th and 21st point if you can get to Pater. Josh Sanchez is your punter. It looks like maybe the Golden Lions. Oh. No. Not ready. We, we mentioned earlier you don't mind the delay of game, even though it led to a safety for the Jaguars earlier, this is a little bit more meaningful because now your punter Sanchez does have his heels on that in line. By the way, look at who your up back is to protect him. It's your guy, Xavier Mitchell. Jaguars are coming, and Mitchell lays a big lick to protect his punter, but here's Southern capitalizing on the field position. They will set up just outside the red zone. Looks like an injury, too on the punt coverage team, unfortunately. It is Caleb Washington on the return. And I believe that's Isaiah Singleton who's slow to get up. So the Jaguars really, even in a better situation, after that interception, doesn't cost them. They'll have to wait until first and 10 as you still have the Golden Lion, Isaiah Singleton, the linebacker down.
Golden Lions last year went six and five, three and four in the SWAC, but again, they are optimistic they can put together a couple of winning seasons, even if this year it does take place in the spring. Of course, Southern last year, six and one in the SWAC, eight and five overall. They're off to a one and zero start this year. Of course, both teams eventually will pick up a freebie when Alcorn State lands on their schedule. They'll be handed a win. And that is a promising sign. And Isaiah Singleton back up. I think he got rolled and rolled on a on someone's shoe and got the wind knocked out of him more so than anything. You know, you don't want a lower extremity injury. That That's tough. But I think right there, that's a more midsection. They'll take a look at him. But here is uh, another look. As you see, he's pursuing... Good hustle. He makes the tackle. First and 10 from the 23 yard line for Southern. And they have gone back to Ladarius Skelton at quarterback. A one yard gain. Lampley had such a promising start coming in relief. A couple of interceptions though when they were in UAPB territory. They're gonna go back to Ladarius at quarterback. Skelton buying time. And will live to see third down. A wise decision by the senior quarterback and really the pressure and rolling opposite his strength, meaning if you're right-handed rolling left, it's a much more difficult pass because you got to square your body and turn it around and then get some accuracy and great coverage in the secondary. That ball would have been uh, up for grabs. So third and nine here for Skelton. And it'll be a short nine at that. Under pressure. Buys time with his feet. Uh, nothing doing. Skelton will just sneak into the red zone. Have to imagine Southern will go for it here on fourth down inside the 20. And I say that. As soon as the field goal kicker. Yeah, they're right? shifting personnel. I think you may just want to get the ice broken here in the second half. Back, I know it. Back within two scores. Yeah, I, I, I know it's it's not ideal. This still makes it a two touchdown and a couple of two point conversions with a little over a quarter to go. 36 yard. Rahas made a 41-yard field goal, proved to be the game winner last weekend on his only try. And Barajas is good. So a 16-point game technically is two scores with a little over a quarter to go. And Southern reverts back to their starting quarterback, Ladarius Skelton. And credit UAPB, they gave Southern great starting field position after that punt exchange, but their defense, you know, you use the phrase bend but don't break, they didn't even bend. No, I think you're right, and time, precious time went off the clock. So even with the three points being put on the board by Southern, Golden Lions stop a touchdown when they intercept the ball, take more time off the clock, punt, and then stop another touchdown. Yes, they give a field goal away, but that's complimentary compared to seven and some momentum with Southern playing its only home game, Lincoln, of the spring of 2021. So let's see if UAPB has the maturity to know how to melt a clock while still being productive. If you could take six minutes off as you can get to the fourth quarter here, I think that's a successful drive. Or get a score. No shenanigans as Barajas kicks it deep. And a touchback for UAPB. Well, there's been no question as to who your quarterback is for UAPB. Skylar Perry, the pride of New Orleans, who headed north to college 
across the state border in Arkansas. Two touchdowns on the ground, two through the air. And they would certainly feel a lot better if they could get another score on the board. Stretch this back to a three-score lead. And I've really liked the mid-range passing, the pinpoint accuracy of that, and the decision-making. He'll hand off to Clark. And Southern not fooled there. will drop Clark for a two-yard loss. Now time will come off the clock here in the third quarter. Obviously, Skylar Perry is still going to have to be able to complete some passes the remainder of this ball game to guide them to victory. Time is on his side, though. And again, as long as there's no turnovers and, or three and outs. Let's see if this is the final play of the third quarter. Back to the ground game and <laughs> running right into Noah Hayes, his own right tackle. That's a 305-pound wall that puts an end to the run for Matthias Clark, all of five foot six. But that will end the third quarter. It's gonna be third and 10 to start the final frame when you rejoin us in Baton Rouge. UAPB looking to kick off the Doc Gamble era with an upset. SWAC football on ESPN is presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket Wireless, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official football sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Lincoln Rose, Steve Foster, start of the fourth quarter here at Mumford Stadium, Baton Rouge. UAPB trying to end a seven game losing streak to these Jaguars, including the last meeting when it was 31-7 Southern. Of course, when we say last year, that was the 2019 fall campaign. Perry under pressure, dumps it down. On third and 10, Jaguars are gonna come up with a much needed stop. That was more like a safety valve as Pressure was coming from Southern off the corner, and Skylar Perry just getting rid of the ball. And again, you just want the, the clock to run. Defense has looked very good here in the initial campaign of the 2021 spring season for the Golden Lions. So the Golden Lions with a 16 point lead were very conservative on that drive. Ultimately it would be three and out. Here come the Jaguars with the block and a chance to return. Immediate dividends on special teams. Don't go anywhere. Mel Bird able to take it to the house. Presumably Southern will go for two. Huge change of events here. And special teams. But that is why, again, UAPB probably needed to continue business as usual. On that a little drive. tentative. Yeah. So Lampley is in for this two-point conversion. Interesting. Joined, joined by the all-conference back in Ben. This pulls it within one score. Lampley just buying time. Back of the end zone, incomplete. And so it is still a two-score lead for UAPB. The block punt. And that is points from special teams. Jaguars still in this one. Your mom's been posting a lot. Punt. Shorter gets the block. Block. And as he looks up from the ground, it's Jamel Bird taking it for the school. I know it's old school, but shouldn't Jamel Bird do the bird? One of my favorite artists, Morris Day. Now, again, UAPB is going to get this football here. So six points on that score, no conversion. 
means it's still a two-score lead for UAPB. And now they can build on their 10-point lead. Now it gets interesting. There's a lot of time here in the fourth quarter. I know it's a two-score game. But you, if you're UAPB, you have to still generate offense. I'm not saying you have to score, but you have to generate offense and get this ball moved down and the clock run down as well, move downfield. Perry still standing tall in that pocket and initially had Wilkes, but Wilkes was immediately popped as that ball comes free. Incomplete. I think you're right. And the hit from Khalil White he needs to keep his eyes up on those. You can get hurt. Second and ten. Good run. Yes, please. There's a first down. That clock will resume. After they move these sticks, Omar Allen, a little change of pace. Again, the pride of Pine Bluff. He had a touchdown against Southern last year. Good run here. Nice awareness with the eyes, and then the feet follow. Let's see if the Jaguars can stiffen back up. Dictate things here on first down. Under pressure, Perry still gets rid of it. And again, they go right back to Allen this time through the air. And Skylar Barrett, Perry at 6'3", 215 has just been difficult to bring down. Well, and he, there's good recognition by the whole offense to realize that here came a rusher off the right edge alerting the quarterback and then the quarterback checking down, finding the hot receiver, which was the running back into the flat. And back to the ground game which is instantly swallowed up. This is where you want to be able to take those extra few seconds before you're be between snaps. Exactly. You can still be aggressive. Normal play calling. You know, sometimes you throw people off. If you go hurry up, especially if you can get good yardage on first down, you can put the defense in a pinch. You say, listen, we'll take some more points if you're gonna give them to us, even though we're trying to take time off the clock. Both teams have been aggressive on third and short. Let's see what they have in mind here. Perry on third and two. A first down for the Golden Lions, and staying in bounds is Ballard. Ballard's come up big into the end zone, and some nice catches and breaking some tackles in here on third down. Makes another reception. I talked about Perry at 6-3, and I think that's your difference right now in this ball game because Southern has brought pressure. Yes. And even when they're in his face, he is able to get over those linemen coming at him. He has still been able to see downfield. Oh, he missed a wide open. Throws it behind oh, Ballard. Woo. Good fake at the line to the running back, and that froze the linebackers at second level of defense and the tacklers. They had to honor the run, and then... Ballard broke open on a little skinny post, and the ball was just low and behind him. If not, if that ball is caught in stride, I think that's a touchdown. And that will briefly stop the clock here, that incomplete pass. As we're still in the early goings of the fourth quarter, UAPB a two-score lead up by 10. Southern had a chance to pull within eight, but unsuccessful on a two-point conversion after their block punt touchdown. Perry. Skyler Perry will call his own number first down and then takes a shot finally being stopped by the linebacker, Kenan Tate. Perry, I love the fact that when he breaks contain, meaning rolling out past the end of the line of scrimmage, he makes his decisions quickly enough to where he can get good yardage, even enough yardage to get a first down because if you hesitate keeping uh, your eyes downfield to look for a receiver, you're not going to take advantage of the fact that the defense will give you the first down with your legs. So inside the red zone, first and 10. And that's a dangerous ball into traffic that he's fortunate 
was not picked off by Adrian Rivers. Yeah, and the ball thrown behind hit the receiver, as you, the intended receiver, Wilkes, as you mentioned. That's a throw, 10-point game when you want to maintain possession. You really can't afford many of those. I think there was somebody breaking open into the end zone. But again, I, I think Perry had his mind set on the receiver he was going to pick out for the pass. Clock stop for second and 10. So they want to get that clock moving again, but Southern is just not allowing anything up the middle. Well, you can get a field goal, which will put you up 13, which is not a bad position to be in, given the clock will be under 10 minutes when you make that decision. Third and 10. Here's another opportunity if Skyler Perry, the quarterback for the Golden Lions, makes the right choice. Letting that play clock melt down. Third and ten. Need to get inside the seven. Perry. And broken up. It'll be fourth down, and we suspect, as you noted, the Golden Lions would like to now make this a 13-point ball game so that Southern couldn't possibly force you into overtime with a touchdown and a field goal. They're going to bring Pivniska, who's on for his first field goal since back on the opening drive when he was good from just outside of 20. His second field goal attempt on the young campaign and is going to push this wide. Southern comes up with a stop and they are still within 10. Jaguars will get the football when you rejoin us. Plenty of time to go in the fourth quarter. I mean, SWAC football schedule presented by USA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And just really excited for all the SWAC members, a chance to finally line up, play some football. Lampley is in at quarterback for Southern here on a critical fourth quarter comeback effort. Again, another quick glance and, and all these teams having to wait after the fall. Again, it's conference only play, no non-conference games. So non-stop rivalry matchups the rest of the spring. 17 yard pass Lincoln to start this drive for the Southern Jaguars. Lampley was in for the two-point conversion after the punt block touchdown. And a procedure call against Southern. Send them back to first and 15. The Gold Lions defense that have picked off Lampley twice now in this ball game. Both deep in their own end of the field. Other than that, Lampley and this offense have been able to move the football with more plays like that. And as Dorian Valiant, another catch. Looks like Solomon Brooks coming off. He was on the coverage. And it's going to make it about second and three now. Again, they had to overcome a five-yard penalty on first down, and this play never got started. I would understand if it was UAPB with some of these issues because right. they didn't suit up last week. Right. Well, we did hear Coach Gamble say, Dot the I's, cross the T's. And, you know, that could be the difference because, again, you do not see the linemen offensively or defensively jumping off sides or not ready to go properly for the Golden Lions. Second and three becomes second and eight. Ball is caught, and it'll be a first down falling forward to extend this drive. Right back to Valiant, his second catch on this drive. Good run. And yards picked up after the catch because it wasn't a first down, Lincoln. And then a nice little cut and a dipsy do move and diving forward. Is that DEAU? Uh, strike out to the side, getting out of bounds. The catch from Marquise McLean. Isn't there an X in that somewhere? Right. Okay. Uh, that was 
I appreciate you following up. I'm just here to help. I got my Letterman <laughs> sweater on, and that's where all those. <laughs> somebody's going to have to Google that one, but uh, I'll put the X on there for you. Second and a short three for Lampley and this Jaguars offense. Thanks to that block punt for a touchdown, renewed optimism for the men in the Golden Tops today. Playing at home. So first and 10. That clock already moving again. Lampley. And I think pretty soon we're going to see probably some Golden Lions with hands on hips. As the Jaguars moving quickly, every time they get a first down, they're able to speed things up. And UAPB has not been able to match them at the line of scrimmage. And Lampley is very much a quarterback in control of this offense. Stands in, fires a strike. It'll be first and goal for Southern. Brandon Hinton with the catch. Whistles blowing. And the reason why the stoppage, the UAPB. Southern getting close to making this a one score ball game. Despite playing from behind the vast majority of today. Lampley again with that pressure takes the hit but still gets rid of the football and fires a dart to Brandon Hinton. As Zion Farmer, your nose guard, makes his way off the field for at least a play. First and goal for Southern. John Lampley trying to lead the comeback. For the men from Baton Rouge. It's going to be an interesting play call here on first and goal with three wide to the top. Lampley, Sims releases laid out of the backfield. Lampley fires a dart. It's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Hinton after a well-timed lick from that secondary. Well, and that's why Hinton, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, early in the season, don't celebrate after a first down. Make sure you can get that touchdown because this would have been a better <laughs> pass to catch. Right on the money, but just could not keep that ball in his arms. Again, that is Marcus Askew who is forced into the starting lineup with Paul Reeves unavailable today. Second and goal for Lampley and the Jaguars. This time they make the connection. Gerard Sims hauls it in. Jaguars are within four, extra point pending. Just a good read here by the quarterback. Finding a running back. You're okay with that. I'm always okay with that. Gerard Sims has renewed some optimism here at Mumford Stadium. They'll go for just the one to make this a three-point ball game. 33-30, our new score. Jaguars with now 13 unanswered points. It's getting it. John Lampley to Gerard Sims all of a sudden has put some new life into this crowd here at Mumford Stadium. Now, still plenty of time to kick this ball deep, and that's exactly what Southern will do. And trust their defense as Ralph is stopped at the 
35, 36 yard line. Well, now UAPB should be feeling some pressure. A three score lead is now down to a field goal. <laughs> This is where you could use your six minutes and pin Southern back or at least get a field goal to make them and force them to come down and score a touchdown. But again, now you're looking for Skylar Perry to do something more so than a three and out. And that's a nice start on first down with Omar Allen. Absolutely. Four or five yards on first down, Lincoln, you know that I can open up on second down and really keep you guessing as a defense. Again, your play call doesn't need to be conservative, but the amount of time between snaps, this is where you have some time to start to go missing. Correct. And you saw quarterback Perry had the option to pull that ball back, leaves it with Allen, who will just pick up what he can straight ahead. A little surprised about that because Skylar Perry has done so well with his legs as well as his arm. It can be third and three. Jag see if Jaguars can come up with a huge three and out. They need the 45 yard line to keep this drive moving. Perry out of the backfield, not gonna get it. Southern defense steps up. Chase Foster, a hero last weekend with the pick six. This time helps stand up the receiver until he gets some reinforcements. Great pursuit by the defense of Southern. They recognize, listen, you got to have one more point than your opponent at the end of the game. Again, as I said, no one's ever won a football game at halftime. Southern still has all three of their timeouts. And again, UAPB after taking a 19 point lead. So here's the issue with that delay of game. Something about the personnel change from UAPB prompted the officials to not allow them to snap the ball, instead allowing Southern to make changes, which you understand. But usually, you're going to get a reset in the play clock. Instead, Great. UAPB is going to lose five yards. And so close to another block. And let's see if they can down this ball. That ball will down itself at the one. Unbelievable. 99 yards for Southern to take a lead. Of course, could tie it up with just a field goal. Jaguars defense gets the three and out, but a tremendous punt from Josh Sanchez. Means the Jaguars, we've seen them march 98 yards today for a touchdown. Can they go 99? Of course, that would be to take a lead. Only need a field goal to have us talking about overtime, perhaps here in Baton Rouge. Lampley, your quarterback for the Jaguars, under pressure, takes a pop. He'll underthrow his receiver, but there's contact. And that's a little bit more luck than anything else involved. And that's going to get them out of their own end zone. And, and that probably was not a good move by the junior. Ogletree. Yeah, so they're going to get that Fuller. Andre, Andre Fuller. Fuller. Check that. Fuller's biggest problem here is he never turned around to see the football. And when that ball is thrown short and you don't think the D-back will ever turn around, you're going to get that flag a lot of the times. That's and the that freshman. is the right call. That's a freshman move. You can face guard the heck out of a receiver <laughs> as long as you don't touch them. Correct. When a ball is underthrown and that receiver wants to come back for the ball, whether he has a chance to get it or not, you're going to be the guilty party. Lampley. 
They'll try to save timeouts. They have all three of them for a fourth quarter comeback as he finds McLean for a modest gain. Good defense, good defense. Another look. As McLean soon after brought down by Stanley Bentley. Second and five. Mitchell probably thought he was being held coming off the edge. Right. Uh, they'll be content with an incomplete pass. Third and five. Well, just for the sake of it, I'll go on the record and say this is your biggest play of the game so far. Yeah, I would think so. There's still timeouts. Southern with three, so they could actually punt and get the ball back and move, you know, flip the field and, and keep going. Because, again, a field goal ties this, Lincoln, right now, as you've mentioned. Southern deep in their own half, and oh. we've got whistles. This could hurt. Will third and five become third and ten? Mm. I think they're gonna get that on the left tackle. Upping the degree of difficulty here from the 16. Preseason all-conference tackle. So third and ten. Keep this drive alive. Lampley. Extra deep drop. Overthrows his target. It's fourth and ten. They have all three of their timeouts, so they should feel comfortable punting this football away. They, they should because, again, you do not want to give the Golden Lions just field position at the 15, 16 yard line. You need to move this ball away from your goal line and end zone. So I would expect the punt team to come out for the Jaguars. So again, your SWAC special teams player of the week. Looking to change the field here. Fair catch from Ralph. UAPB gets the ball at the 44-yard line in Southern Territory. And they just need some first downs. And, and here's the thing. The great thing and the first and primary thing, the ultimate thing that a punt returner needs to do is catch the ball. Because hidden yardage, the ball bounces and then goes, you know, 15, 20 more yards away from where you're trying to be as an offense. That's a huge play by making a catch at the 45-yard line. Skyler Perry, every snap today at quarterback for UAPB. Just hang on to that football, and it'll be a successful play. It's a one-yard carry from Clark, but he stays in bounds, and he maintains possession. Yeah, that's true. Again, I just think if you really want to keep Southern's defense off balance, Perry may need to keep the ball Especially on first down. I know he doesn't want to take himself out of the game. He's the signal caller. Not sure what the situation would be for the Golden Lions if, in fact, Perry had to come out of the game. They happily take time to get that play call in to Perry. Inside three and a half minutes now. UAPB certainly not within field goal range here. I might have used the timeout there. I know you have three of them. But right now, I can run the clock down under three minutes. A couple of carries from Matthias Clark, the freshman. Third and seven. Does UAPB consider risking an incomplete pass to try to pick up a first down here? You don't want another three and out. Perry down the middle. And Southern will still have all three of their timeouts. Fourth down coming up, fourth and seven. And let's see what UAPB has in mind. Has your punter done so well that you think he can pin them again inside the five-yard line? 
Well, really, this was a three and out, and, you know, I, you would have liked to have seen at least one first down in this drive. Last punt from Josh Sanchez essentially died on the one-yard line. Caleb Washington back to return. High snap. And they are making it interesting. This can go all the way into the end zone. And a flag is going to come in. And this may cut the distance at least half the way back to the goal. Let's see if we get unnecessary roughness against a member of Southern special teams. Hitting a defenseless player. Yeah, at the very least, that's going to be a legal block in the back. So even if you get the touchback, you're going to take that back to the 10 yard line. That's Sean Steele, preseason all conference free safety, who took that shot in the back. Yeah, either way, that's going to be a half the distance penalty. Yeah. That is correct. And I understand what, what the deal is, but you can't do that anymore. And it looked like that was actually in the back, and it probably would have been a clipping or some type of – this is all bad. There are multiple things to choose from. The result, because of where you were on the field, would be the same with half the distance. Correct. Whether it was 10 or 15. Correct. Oh, no. 26 all of your timeouts though for Southern 90 yards to pay dirt a little less than that for a potential game tying field goal effort Lampley is still your guy here in Baton Rouge And because the foul occurred, I believe, before the touchback, this ball's at the five-yard line. That's absolutely right. Even uh, That foul longer. occurred during the play, so yes. that ball does not get the benefit of eventually winding up in the end zone. So 95 yards ahead. Lampley, sideline, incomplete. It was a beautiful throw from Lampley. It was. Hinton just could not bring it in. Hinton, who again was the favorite target last week for starting quarterback Ladarius Skelton with five catches. And the coverage there from Marcus Askew, who again has been forced into the role of Nickelback and has come through with an A-plus performance so far today. Second down. And UAPB playing pretty conservative at the line. Lampley, though, a little sidearm toss. It's going to be close to a first down, depending on where they mark him out of bounds. It will be a first down play, ultimately, for Southern. As Ethan Howard, the freshman, with the grab. And Southern's going to use its first timeout. Good move here. Still two. In the back pocket for Coach Odoms. 2.13 to go in regulation. Southern trailed by as many as 19 this half. Defense with some big plays, special teams, a big block punt for a score. Second straight week, Southern has a non-offensive touchdown. That helped them to a three-point win last week. What will be the outcome today? Well, you have to tell your team the first and foremost is to get in the field goal range. Remember, SWAT coverage continues tonight here on ESPN3, 7 o'clock Central, the classic rivalry between Texas Southern and Prairie View A&M. Lampley, little chest pass. 
as Devin Ben is there to bail out his quarterback who's strong enough, wrapped up by Golden Lions. And now they're going to be two yards shy of the next first down. Heck of an effort by John Lampley. Does his best, Patrick Mahomes. It's with Colby Watts draped on him. It's going to be third and two coming up after he was looking back towards Brandon Hinton. And as dangerous as that pass seemed to be, you got to love the effort that you see from a guy who didn't start the game, came in, had some turnovers, and still has an opportunity here with 134 left on the clock to get his team in the field goal position to at least extend this competition. Just keep this drive moving. They only need two yards to pick up that next first down. Lampley downfield, incomplete, fourth and two, and you have to imagine they got to go for it. Absolutely. They do have two timeouts, but 88 seconds is all that remains on the fourth quarter clock, and all you need are two yards. Just think most of the effort here on this drive so far is overcoming what was that unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Right. They're just now out to the 24-yard line. Fourth down. This could be ball game. And hope stays alive here at Mumford. McLean with the catch, the first down. A move the sticks. Southern with two timeouts to work with. 63, make it 83 seconds on the clock. It's getting interesting. And, you know, thinking and dunking can work if you can pick up the first down still with two timeouts for Southern. Early on this drive, we saw UAPB give them underneath. They didn't want to give up a big play. As ultimately stopped by Kintrell Harris. It's going to be second and maybe eight. A timeout by Southern. Good call. And with a minute six to go, all, all that for three yards. And UAPB was more than happy to give it to him. You're right. The dink and dunk is okay. And now Southern down to one timeout. But it still means that they can throw the ball across the middle. And, again, your strategy here is at least try to pick up enough yards for a first down so you can have a momentary stop. Because if you want to clock it, which is getting the snap and throwing it into the ground to stop the clock and then having two or three more downs to pick up ten more yards, you're still trying to get into field goal range initially and then look for an opportunity possibly to throw the ball in the end zone and get six and take the lead. Second straight week, Southern is flirting with overtime. Last week, they had the lead up by three, and the football gods favored them in Montgomery, Alabama as a potential game-time field goal from Alabama State went wide. Now they are the ones trying to perhaps buy some additional time in their lone home game this year. They've still got a lot of ground to cover with a minute 16 to do so. Amply on second and seven with one timeout. Underneath and out of bounds. As they go back to the freshman tight end, Ethan Howard. Good pass. Again, can it be enough to keep Southern out of field goal range and definitely out of the end zone. Still on their own half of the field, a minute nine in a timeout. Golden Lions bringing the pressure, but that line is holding up for Lampley. But ultimately unable to make the diving catch. Otherwise, great effort from Corey Williams. His redshirt freshman target. UAPB was not going to go to the prevent there. No, and you shouldn't because you need to cover your, the receivers. You still don't want to just give up field goal range and concede three points. 
you're winning this ball game. And if you play good defense, which you have for most of this ball game this afternoon, you certainly want to not fall off at the end. Second and 10 from their own 41 yard line. Trailing by three. And that's an incomplete pass. The coverage from Kavian Johnson. Richard sophomore out of Dallas's North Mesquite High School. That's what you want. You want pressure on the receiver, you want pressure on the passer. And we've got a golden line down. It's Colby Watts. His motor's been gone all day. The senior Sam linebacker. With 60 seconds to go, that's all that separates UAPB from potentially beginning 1-0 and o in the Doc Gamble era. Buys time for Southern to talk things over. They won't complain. I know you know this one, Lincoln. Bell, Biv, Biv yeah. DeVoe. And that's with an E-A-U-X? <laughs> Formerly of the band known as New Edition. They did not make the cut for uh, Coming to America's sequel. It, they did not. All the other greats were in it. Roxbury, Massachusetts for some trivia. Third and 10. Southern down by a field goal. Lampley being chased, throws one up. Intercepted. Kevian Johnson with the pick will take it the other way. And Kevian Johnson, he'll take the lick. At some point, I'm sure his coaches were just hoping he would get down. But that should be your ball game. Third interception from this defense today for the Golden Lions. This is after Southern picked off UAPB quarterbacks four times last year. Johnson may have cramped up along the way. Uh, it's the third pick thrown by Lampley as he was under some pressure. A lot of pressure, Lincoln. And about that's about the best that quarterback could do as John Lampley seeing two Golden Lions all in his face. And he just wanted to get the ball up for maybe a 50-50 opportunity. Perry will hand it off. This is the part of the game where defensive players just start ripping at the football. Omar Allen with the carry. And a great return because that keeps Southern, even if something miscues, they still got to get back in the field goal range or take the ball all the way 80 plus yards to score. So a good move there. It's a great return as long as you don't fumble it. Was well, still a great return, even if you kind of did fumble it. Yes, you're you're absolutely right, but because you're moving the ball away from your end zone. Yep. Uh, Golden Lions have had the golden touch today, and again, Lincoln, you could have knocked it down. You know, I, I I was waiting for you to say that. You said that at the goal line, but it was third down. But that's right. There you go. So again, Texas Southern, Prairie View A and M, as if this didn't quench your thirst for uh, some spring football. Got more swat coming your way. Perry, they'll keep it on the ground. And no more timeouts. Southern used its last after that previous play. So the Jaguars cannot stop the clock after using uh, their final timeout right here. Uh, it'll Clock. be yeah, 30. <laughs> they're going to put time back right. on. 36 right. seconds to go in the ball game. Right. Well, I think everybody had Southern as probably their favorites to start 2 and 0 in the West Division. UAPB didn't get a game in last week. All sorts of adversity, even non-pandemic related. Just having to leave Pine Bluff and go to Little Rock for a week during that freeze that came through the region. And here is victory formation for UAPB. The Golden Lions will start the season 1-0. and oh. Skyler Perry guides the team 
to a victory to kick off the Doc Gamble era. Great game by Skylar Perry and the rest of the Golden Lions. If you're a fan of offense, defense, and special teams, you didn't just get a lot of something, you got a lot of everything. I agree. And, you know, it takes all three phases of the game, and that was displayed at least here this afternoon. So the Golden Lions spoil the lone home game for the favorites in the West Division. Perhaps expectations raised in Pine Bluff, Arkansas moving forward. For Steve Foster, I'm Lincoln Rose saying so long from Baton Rouge. 33-30, UAPB hangs on for their season opening victory here in the spring of 2021. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.